Hi, uh, welcome to Soil Structure Software. My name is Liban Afi, and uh, in this video we will demonstrate two examples. Uh, the first example will be using SI units, and it will be for the program cantilever shoring, also known as a uh, soldier pile or soldier beam retaining wall, um, and also known as embedded retaining wall. So our first example is SI units and then the next example will be English units. So in our first example we see that we have an embedded retaining wall and uh, the program I've already pre-filled it but I'll explain the steps. It's three and a half meter excavation height. There is a uniform surcharge of seven kilopascals. There is a lateral load at the top of the pile of half kilo newton meter and then there is overturning moment of one kilo newton meter per meter length. So uh, in this example, we have analysis method and we can use net pressure, gross pressure, or user defined. Uh, we decided to use gross pressure method. And then if the pile can be either drilled or driven, and we're going to assume it's drilled. And the short height is three and a half meters. The pile spacing, is 2.5 meters and the pile diameter the pier diameter where the pile is inserted will be 0 0.6 meters now we define the soils as two backfill soils because when you have the gross pressure method there is the backfill soil uh, backfill soil from the top of shoring to the dredge line and then there is the backfill soil from the dredge line to the pile tip. So this portion is called backfill soils 1 and this portion is called backfill soils 2. Now by definition we're assuming that backfill soils 2 is the same as the passive soils because anything on the left side of the pile has to be the soil the same as the right side of the pile. So we started here with uh, backfill soil 1 uh, soil friction angle of 32 degrees and we are using the uh, Coulomb method here. So uh, we're using phi over 2 as the soil pile friction angle. So half of 32 degrees is 16. The slope angle, this is level, it's 0. Now if you want, you can go and say it's 18 degrees. And it will go up vertically, but let's come back to 0. And uh, the pile inclination, this pile is vertical, it's 90 degrees. The backfill soil unit weight here is soil 1 is 20 kilonewtons per cubic meter. And we're assuming a vertical uniform surcharge of 7 kilopascals. Then below that on the backfill soils 2, we have a lower friction angle of 24. We're using phi over 2 as the pile soil pile friction angle. And it's the backfill soil unit weight is slightly lower at 18 and a half. Now when we come down to the passive soils, so that was backfill soils too. Passive soils, it's still 24 degrees, but the soil pile friction angle is negative because the resistance is in the opposite direction than the backfill soil. And when we use Coulomb, we'd like to use anywhere from phi over 3 to phi over 2. So we're using phi over 3, so 24 divided by 3 is 8 degrees. That's the soil pile friction angle. The uh, passive slope in this case is descending. So we said it's minus 18 degrees, and you can change it here. If you say it's 0, then it becomes level. So let's go to minus 18 degrees, which is almost 3 to 1. Now, soil structure cantilever shoring software allows cohesion in the passive zone. And for this soil, we determine cohesion is 30 kilopascals, and the passive soil unit weight is 18 and a half. So now we uh, put the elastic uh, modulus of the steel. It's, we're assuming 200,000 megapascals. And at the drop-down menu, you can choose North American. Uh, Australian, British, or European. In this case, we decided to use Australian beams. And then you have a drop-down menu. And we picked 410 UV 59.7. So this is the cross-section. If you look at the plan view, <coughs> it's going to give you 
60 centimeters or 0.6 meter diameter and then it inserts the correct pile that you picked which is the 410 UB 597 and it gives you the diagonal distance clearance and in this case it's uh, 7.83 centimeters that's plenty um, clearance usually 5 centimeters is enough uh, and then we said the pile spacing is two and a half meters okay so we have a pile every two and a half meters okay now the yield strength we assumed 340 megapascals and allowable top pile deflection so when you go to cross section that's here the deflection we want to limit it to 15 millimeters and since this is a concrete the pile is filled in with concrete then we chose 27 megapascals as the compressive strength now we're allowed to put loads on top of the pile in this case axial is zero with it's only retaining wall so it doesn't have any axial load lateral we're assuming half a kilonewton per meter and moment one kilonewton meter per meter and they're over here half and one and then lagging design this is on the short height is three and a half meter we can choose uh, either no lagging which is only if you have bedrock pressure treated wood lagging timber lagging steel plate or concrete uh, lagging so we decided to go with pressure treated wood okay arching factor arching factor the soil is going to arch so if you go here if the soil is going to go like that right arch so you can reduce the bending moment by up to 60 percent and bending stress we assume this 15 megapascals the shear is two and a half megapascals uh, if it's parallel to the grain and if it's perpendicular eight you can change these values and lagging size factor so now let's see what the uh, coulomb method says these are the results so here is all the input here is all the results and here are the diagrams so active pressure coefficient ka it's 0.275 it takes the soil pile wall friction and then the effective fluid pressure is five and a half kilonewtons per cubic meter passive the k sub p coefficient is 1.47 and uh, effective fluid equivalent fluid pressure is 27.2 and the thrust maximum passive thrust uh, is given as 204 so when we look at it uh, the program creates automatically the loading data and this is the loading side so you go to the cross section it, this is zero and it goes all the way to 8.71 that is the point where you only need embedment so below that we don't have any earth pressure so uh, these are the values kilopascals and then on the passive side it starts at four well the short height is three and a half but if you go to passive soils we said ignore passive height of half a meter okay so that's why it goes it starts at four and then here is the output data the total beam length it computes is 6.61 plus three and a half so it's 10.11 and braced length lr it's allowable is 4.55 and the l sub p this is from the steel manual it's 1.69 so we're interested in this green which is the deflection okay so if you were to uh, the deflection is 14.66 we're allowed 15 millimeters so we just barely made it okay so if you wanted to view the analysis uh, the program has up to 63 nodes okay and so node one is at zero depth and it's in 0.12 meter increments here is the plot of shear the column for moment column for slope and deflection okay and if you want to view the graphs Okay, so here is the loading. It goes all the way down to the pile tip. That's the gross pressure. If we said it's a net pressure, okay, let me show you that. So if I go to general data and I say I want to do this as a net pressure, now I say view all graphs. Now you see it, it doesn't go all the way down to the pile tip. It only goes down to the excavation height of three and a half meters. So let's come back to gross pressure. Okay. So now we're back to our gross pressure. This is all the way active. 
and this is your passive okay and here is the length that you need to embed for stability below that it's just um, so right here is 8.71 uh, you, you could you could see it in this area if I put my cursor 8.71 but if I go down it's 10.1 so this is additional depth to compensate for uh, earth pressure theory and then here is the depth for low, uh, the diagram for shear, diagram for moment. Here is the maximum moment. Here is slope, and here is the one we're interested in deflection, which is 14.66. Now you can view one graph. So if you just are interested in loading, you can just view the loading. And here are the eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It gives you eight points. And then on this side, it gives you one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so uh, the checks, uh, so what we need to do is the maximum moment below grade, it's 216, that's always higher than maximum moment above grade, and utilization, we're using 85% of the moment capacity, so that's pretty efficient uh, pipe. Interaction PM, this is the axial versus the moment interaction, it's 85%, and for buckling ratio, the slenderness, ratio has to be less than 200 and it's 185 and finally we look at lagging design and that's what we get uh, soil pressure and the final answer is that we need a 75 millimeter thick uh, pressure treated wood that will span between center to center of pipe okay next let's open a file that is in english units because we have uh, users in both English and SI okay. so with the English units we have a uh, 12 foot short height and we have uh, backfill soils now in this case instead of using the gross pressure we're using the net pressure okay so the pressure only comes down there and instead of using the Coulomb method we're using a soils report value so equivalent fluid pressure in the soils report is 40 PSF per foot or PCF. Soil unit weight is 115. Uh, vertical uniform surcharge is 100 PSF. That's this one. Okay. And we have a shear load. This could be from slope creep or from a surcharge above. And it's 1 kip per foot. Okay. And uh, the moment is 4 kip foot per foot. So the program asks you the loading per foot length of wall or per meter length of wall. Okay, so now we go to passive soils. Now immediately you have to notice it's sloping. So you have like a descending slope, like a hillside. And so it's 3 to 1, approximately minus 18 degrees. Unit weight is 115. And now we're allowed to use cohesion in the passive zone. It's 150 PSF. And the passive wedge multiplier, um, IBC allows 2 multiplier on passive zone so that's what we're using 2.0 for like isolated pore and for structural load because we're working in english units we want to use north american or aisc uh, beams and in this example we picked uh, w16 by 100 so when we go to plan view this is the 24 inch pier this is the w uh, 16 by 100 and clear distance is 2 inches now some municipalities may insist if you have a uh, permanent shoring to provide 3 inches and in which case you're going to go to a 30 inch pier but most of the time uh, cantilever shoring is temporary so 2 inches is plenty and we have 2.04 uh, yield strength is 50 ksi allowable top of pile deflection uh, for 12 feet three quarters two-thirds of an inch seems to be about right so we're using 0.67 inches and uh, maybe in the soils report it says that the uh, embedded portion has to be filled back with concrete and maybe you have a sulfate type 2 and so they specified 4 ksi um, axial load is zero kips lateral load uh, this could be again from slope creep or something uh, at the surcharge level it's one kip per foot and moment is four so now let's go to our pressure uh, and you can see the program develops the pressure all the way to the 
um, excavation depth, which is 12. Below that, it's not gross pressure. It will use a net pressure. So below that, it fills it with zero. And you could see the values in the loading side are positive. The values in the passive side are negative because they're opposite direction. We go to out, um, output data. And now we go back to the um, height. It's 12. Now, because this is descending slope at the toll, uh, the passive zone is reduced. It only has 175. So in order to uh, provide stability, you have to go deep, almost like two times as much. So uh, two times as much as short height. So short height is 12. The program computes 26.61. Okay. And the L sub R and the L sub P is per AISC steel manual. Uh, maximum shear is 82 kips. And that's at 18.3. So if you look at uh, view all graphs, okay, you can see here is the loading for the soil active, and here is the passive resistance. By the way, in the passive, most soils report will cap it. They may give you three or four KSF. So the program determines what this value is, and then it takes the line. At in this case, we had I believe 270. Let me see here what our passive was. Uh, oh, sorry, our passive was 175. So it takes the angle at 175 PCF per foot or PSF per foot until it reaches 3000, which is the value specified. Then it remains at constant. Okay, this is all you need. And if you look over here, you're going to see that for equilibrium, you only need to go down to 33.81 total. Okay, so the zero starts from top of shoring. But because of earth pressure inaccuracies, we multiply that by a factor and it goes down now to 38.61. Here is your shear. You can see your maximum. Here is your maximum moment. And here is your maximum deflection. Now we go into checks and we find out that the maximum moment below grade is 494. And it's only using 34% of the moment capacity. So this is a case where um, your deflection, if you look at your uh, deflection data, it's uh, 0.53 and we, we're allowed to go to 0.67. So we can decide to use a smaller beam. Okay, so let's go to maybe W14 by, instead of 16 by 100. Let's try W14 by 82. Okay, so uh, output data, the deflection is less than 0.67, it's 0.645. Now, at least moment capacity is 49%. So it's a little bit more realistic. I don't think we can go any smaller beam because it's very close to 0.67. Let's try one more. Yeah, it's 0.676. So we come back to W14 by 82. Um, and then we check the slenderness ratio, KL over R. It's less than 200. It's 121. PM interaction is very low because it's mostly moment. There is no axial load. So it's at 49%. Lagging design. This is um, pressure treated wood. Is the one we chose. We could have chosen a steel plate. And then in which case you need 5 8 inch steel plate. We could choose concrete lagging. And if we say it's uh, 4.5 KSI, we require minimum 3 inch concrete lagging with number 4 to 12 inches on center both ways. And it computes the modulus of rapture as 0.6 KSI. But let's come back to pressure treated and you need 4 by 12. This assumes that your uh, bending stress for the wood or the timber is 1200 PSI. The reason it's not 3 by 12, because we have 8 foot on center, right? Is because you have a uniform surcharge. So if we were to take the, go back to backfill soil and assume its uniform surcharge is 0, now you could see the lagging is 3 by 12. So the surcharge uh, inf influenced the uh, lagging size factor. Okay, and with that we come to the uh, conclusion of uh, soil structure. So if you need to download this, you, you click here on the website. And our website is soilstructure.com. Thank you.